Now let us see enthalpy change or enthalpy change for different types of reactions. The first in the list is enthalpy of enthalpy of combustion. We write C for combustion and we, the symbol is delta CH naught. See, it's the amount of energy and usually we know that combustions are always are exothermic. So it's the amount of energy released when one mole of a substance is completely combusted in air. So when it is completely combusted, whatever the amount of energy is being released, heat is being released, that's called enthalpy of reaction. Then in the next is, is the enthalpy of atomization. We call it delta AH naught. It's the amount of energy required to convert one mole of the diatomic molecular species to its particular, to its gaseous atoms. Suppose we have a hydrogen molecule and it's the, it's in gaseous state. We give energy so that we can get to hydrogen gas. So this, this is called enthalpy of atomization. Similarly, if we have suppose sodium solid, we give heat so that we get what sodium uh, gas. Here in this case, this is called enthalpy of sublimation also, but this enthalpy of sublimation is equal to the enthalpy of atomization because actually we are converting the sodium uh, atoms uh, from solid state to the gaseous state. This is enthalpy of atomization because we can't get as such molecules of sodium. So all these are indicating your enthalpies of atomization. And let me give an example also, like when this methane is combusted in oxygen, we get CO2 and H2O. In this, since this methane is being combusted, the enthalpy in, in change in during this process is called enthalpy of combustion of methane. So this is what we have enthalpies of atomization, enthalpy of combustion. And then we have the most important is the bond enthalpies or bond dissociation enthalpies. Bond enthalpies. The third in the list we write it bond. See, it's mainly is of two type. It's, it's, it is bond dissociation enthalpy or it is average bond energy. Now, let me give you an idea. We define this as the amount of energy required to break one mole of the bonds to this uh, one mole of the bonds is called bond enthalpy. Now bond enthalpy, if it is a diatomic molecule, if it is a diatomic molecular species, like if suppose we have chlorine, though it is in the gaseous form, we give energy in order to get two chlorine gaseous atom, the enthalpy in change involved is called bond enthalpy of chlorine. Now this is actually is bond, we exactly technically speaking, this is bond dissociation energy because only one type of bond is being formed, one mole of a bond is formed. So whatever the amount of energy is required to break one mole of such CL-CL bonds, we call it a bond enthalpy or bond dissociation energy. But if we have suppose a polyatomic molecular species, let me give you an example. Like if suppose you have methane gaseous state, we give energy in order to get what? Carbon gas plus four hydrogen gas. That means what? We in one molecule, we know that there are four CH bonds. And if we are taking one mole, so we have to take four bonds, CH bonds of the one molecule multiplied by one mole of the CH4 molecules. And we know that in this case, what we get is the bond enthalpy overall comes out to be 1665 kilojoules per mole. But this is for one mole of methane. And in this, how many methane CH bonds are broken down? They are four. So we cannot say that this is the bond enthalpy of CH bond. In order to find out the bond enthalpy of CH bond, what we have to do is we have to divide this data by four. And we are, and why we call it an average now? Let me give you a, an ex explanation of this also. It is because when this methane is given energy first time, first bond enthalpy, one of the CH bond break and we got, we get this CH3 plus H. Now in this case, I'm writing down these bond enthalpies of this, 
different types, different the CH, CH, CH bonds, which breaks down step in step by step processes. And in this case, it is 427, 427 kilojoules per mole. Then the CH3 is again given second bond enthalpy, so that we get CH2 and H. The bond enthalpy comes out to be 439 kilojoules per mole. Then again we give from CH2 one more bond enthalpy, third bond, en bond enthalpy, so that what we get is CH plus H. In this case, the energy required was 452 kilojoules per mole. Then the CH is again given to give you C and H. In this case, we require 347 kilojoules per mole. See the summation of all these forces, 1665 kilojoules per mole. But this is, remember, is for the breaking of the four CH bonds. So for one CH bond, the bond enthalpy will be 1665 divided by 4, which comes out to be approximately 416 kilojoules per mole. So this is how we determine the bond enthalpies.